Hello everyone there on Facebook. Welcome uh, to my home studio here in Algoma, Wisconsin. This is Tim J. Kornowski. Welcome you to another broadcast of Kornowski Originals Live Art Demos. Hope you're enjoying them. I hope I'm broadcasting right now and that my wife will let me know if it's not recording. So here we go. It's a little bit of a surprise. I don't know if you can see what I've got sketched on this little piece of paper behind me. But uh, what I'm going to do tonight is kind of just work out some uh, uh, drawing techniques for you and uh, see how far we can get. Sometimes I don't know how far I'm going to get with the art that I demonstrate, but many times it goes a lot further than I imagine. So hopefully you can have some fun watching and maybe I'll have to zoom this in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And maybe I'll just turn this a little bit. But you, to be able to see this, maybe you want to do some art yourself. Use this as an art instructional video then, if you like. No problems with that. And please share if there's anyone you know that would like to uh, do some art. Um, you're always welcome to go ahead. Hey, Sharon, how's it going? If I peer in here, my head looks very large, see? And uh, so I'll try not to say hi too often. I don't want to scare anyone. So anyways, um, I'm just going to get some music playing here since I like to have some music while I, while I play or while I work. So I'm not going to say what I'm drawing yet, but uh, it's kind of a surprise from a wife if she can't see what I have in my tray here at the moment. So here goes. I'm working on a from a photograph. And I think I can get away with the camera not seeing what I'm doing if I put the picture right here. That should work. Got to get everything set up so I can get to work here, so. Okay. Just a really simple uh, pen and ink sketch. Nothing too fancy. And hopefully we'll we'll sketch it out and kind of uh, bring it to completion while in the uh, broadcast tonight. So should be fun. like a little relaxing jazz myself sometimes especially if you've had kind of a longer maybe a rough day a little bit it's kind of nice to uh, relax and you know maybe not the heavy metal tonight right but something more relaxing I'm not much into heavy metal these days I'll let you all kind of take guesses as to what the subject matter is as I work. And I'm going to uh, basically use a uh, technique called cross hatching, where you predominantly use uh, lines, but also I may be using say pointillism where you just use the dot of your pen and just kind of um, uh, poke it at the paper you've been cleared excellent I like to see that I like to hear that good news Sharon's been working on a lot of art herself actually recently and shared some pictures with me I like her colors a lot and very cool colors. They work really well together. If my wife's watching right now, then uh, hopefully she.
she can take a guess as to what the subject matter is. She might just recognize. She's going to be celebrating her birthday this week on Thursday. <clears throat> so that should be pretty fun. Take her out to dinner and do some fun activities together. So happy birthday to my lovely wife Jennifer this week. Is she going to be hmm 26 this year? Samson. Samson, this is supposed to be a picture of Aaron Rodgers. What are you talking about? Samson. Our dog Samson? You mean you mean this Samson right here? I guess so. Yeah, wouldn't that be funny? Walk on the beach, that sounds like a great idea. Yes, I thought I'd surprise you, my wife, and uh, have a little picture of our dog drawn up here. Hopefully you like it. Maybe you'll sleep with it under your pillow. No, yeah, that's probably going too far. We really like our pets, though, around this house. We like animals a lot. We like our cat, Delilah. This is Samson. Imagine that, we named our pets after Bible names. Now oh, those Christians, they're, they're a funny bunch, aren't they? I'm kind of a funnier guy anyways. I was a little bit of a class clown when I was a kid. It was fun though, it's fun, you know, making people laugh. I, Sometimes I, I try a little too hard to make my wife laugh, but other times she laughs and I'm not, I'm not even trying, so it works out pretty good. Our dog is like a Jack Russell Terrier mix. He's really a goofball. He's really laid back. Perfect uh, um, comparison with uh, Delilah, who's very feisty and Kind of attacks his tail every now and again. He'll just be minding his own business and she'll just kind of come up out of nowhere and bite him on the rear leg. Not to draw blood or anything, but that's just her. That's just her personality coming out. She can't help herself. Imagine if humans did that, so all of a sudden just go up to somebody and bite their leg. Hey Tom, good to see you. Tom Conley is a officer out of Green Bay. Good guy. Went to, went to school with him. So as I was saying, this is our, our family dog here. All 13 pounds of him soaking wet. Someday I'll, we'll get one of those Siberian Huskies with the blue eyes. But right now, this little 13 pounder's doing us a good job. He's our little guard dog. And we're just kind of sketching a quick little sketch of him tonight. Try to catch his little doggy personality. Got them little floppy ears there. As I mentioned, it's my wife's birthday this week. Turning, what did I say, 24? No, she looks 24. It's a little show and tell for you. She's a homeschool teacher and she got one of these. 
It's a golden apple. It's not really made of gold, but everything's backwards, of course, because it's Facebook. But it says, Jennifer Terry Kornowski, Teacher of the Year. Not a lot of teachers can say they have a golden apple, so my wife can. Notice that it says Teacher of the Year. That means every year she's the Teacher of the Year. So it's not specific to any year. I think it takes a lot to uh, teach kids, especially your own kids. Because they chip off the old block sometimes and they can really get on your nerves. So uh, hats off to you teachers out there. You all deserve golden apples. He's got a little bit of brown over his eyes. Saw a guy doing portraits in Wisconsin Dells recently. Just whipping them out on the on the street corner. Pretty good at it too. More caricatures. It's fun to watch though. It's fun to watch art being made right before your eyes. So he's kind of scruffy. He's got this little chin here. This little kind of little dinky little nose. And hair shooting out wherever it, wherever it can grow. Nice thing about pen and ink is you can be pretty free with it. You know, just kind of whip those lines out. just a few lines. But his, you know, he's got a lot of hair, a lot of white hair, but his eyes really stand out. You know, we like going to the zoos a lot. Every time we get into a new area, we'll look up, see if they have a free zoo, a non-free zoo, whatever. We'll go in there and check out all the animals. And we're always talking to them. I was talking to a bison the other day when I was at a zoo with my daughters and wife and niece and nephew. I was talking to him. He was listening. You know, maybe they don't talk back or anything, but I asked him if the bison behind him was his wife or girlfriend. And he kind of shrugged his shoulders really, his, he kind of moved his head really hard, like, like, negativo, pal. Kind of like, that's that's Bruce over there, ain't, ain't my wife. I seemed like he was a little upset when I asked. And then he calmed down. Hanging out with a bison. Got to darken the eyes a little bit more. Because that's what his eyes look like, they're very dark around the edges. Hopefully I've surprised my wife a little bit tonight with a picture of her favorite dog in the world. We talk to Samson all the time. He's a little goofball. Thanks for sharing everyone. I enjoy the shares. I get to meet new people. Even if it's just online sometimes. Some people I meet on social media and in this life, anyways, I, I don't get to meet him, but one day I will. It's just interesting how it can bring so many people across the world together. Especially art. Art has the ability to do that anyways, but I'm just talking social media. It's very cool. There's the birthday girl as she comes into the Algoma studio. Well, it's pretty easy to 
it's kind of hard to mess it up, you know, because he's already really cute anyways. That looks really good, like Samson. Well, he's got that little look, you know, and he kind of looks at you like, you know, it's not like he needs bacon all the time, he just, he just wants to hang out with us. He wants love, she says. He wasn't like the bison I met. The bison that I met, he was a little more rugged, a little more like offstandish, but he was staring at me like right in the face. I had my face like a couple inches from him in the, and he was in the cage, of course. That was pretty cool. Little animal souls. I don't think you gave him a haircut in this, uh, before this picture was taken. So he's got a lot of hair. Which is quite alright. He looks cute either way. We were just talking about when we have leftovers and he happens to be in the vehicle on a trip. We can't leave the vehicles, or can't leave the food outside of a cooler or he'll, uh, He'll get into the bag of food and just eat it all. Yeah. We had a different dog that was just like him, same kind of breed, but it was a girl. She was a little more feisty. And one time, Jennifer left the groceries in the vehicle and she was going up and down the stairs bringing food in the house and left the dog in there just for a couple minutes. Dog got into the raw meat, ate it all, and then Jennifer goes out there to grab the dog, Muffin, her name was, barfed all over her shirt. Barf. All over. I wasn't even there, but I feel like I was there from the way she explained it. Raw meat chewed up by a dog. I to say that I was pregnant. And she was pregnant. <laughs> Facebook, she was pregnant. Enjoy that. Barfed. All over her. Mom, I don't want to go down there right now. Come here. I'm happy where I am. Oh, special guest. Come here. Okay. Let's draw him a picture of you. Probably start barking at himself. <laughs> He's got nice little tufts of hair all over the place here. He looks like a mini cow when we when Jennifer gives him his haircut. Cuz we groom our own animals at our house. We're, we're we're like DIY people. Here, I'll put his little tail in here. There we go. He's actually sitting in a bucket in this picture. So I'll go ahead and Put the bucket in and a little handle right here. It's actually something the cat would probably do, not not the dog. He's only eight months. Eight months in this picture, my wife says. Eight month old dog. He doesn't really look much older than here, though. To be honest, I don't I don't see too too much age on him. Thank you. There we go. The eyes are where I'm really going to focus a little extra time because there's a lot of depth and you can see a lot of soulish part of an animal, especially a person around the eyes. Even that bison I was talking to at the zoo. I don't think he really minded being in there. He was kind of very aloof type of animal. I think though he probably would have been happier with a big herd of bison running around on the plains like they did many years ago.
Samson in a giant white pail. That's what this picture should be called. I've always enjoyed doing pen and ink drawings. It's always a lot of fun. Use the cross hatching technique like we talked about earlier. And also you can use just little dots. Like Vincent Van Gogh in his drawings he used a lot of dots. If anybody ever wants to have their pet drawn, you ought to just send me a picture and we'll we'll make it right here on the program. It'd be kind of fun. A lot of people have pets. Treat them like their own family members. A lot of times our pets are a whole lot nicer than our family members anyways, right? Just saying. They're always, always happy to see you, and it's, I'm going to be honest, I'm not, I haven't always been like that, but a dog is always happy to see you when you come home. Even our old dog, Muffin, who, uh, we had for years, years ago, and she was always happy to see me when I came home, even if I wasn't much of a dog person at the time. Unconditional love, that's right. They just don't know anything else. Man's best friend. Now cats, that's a different story. You, my wife could talk about cats. She could talk about our cat. It's a very interesting cat. I'm a cat person. But I admit, sometimes they just don't want anything to do with you. Not sure why, I mean, I feed her, I change her cat box and everything. Our cat, I think she sleeps about 18 hours a day. I'm not sure what she dreams about, but it must be pretty interesting to want to stare at the back of her eyelids for that long. A cat is yawning as I said that. Sometimes, our cat's strange because when she yawns enough, she'll, oh wait, no. When she's meowing, she'll turn her meow into a yawn. Don't really understand it yet, but it's just something she likes to do. She also likes it when you pet her when she eats. It encourages her to eat more. Where did Samson go? Did he take off? Our dog Samson's a very interesting guy. He likes to sleep with stuffed animals at night. He sleeps in a big wicker basket full of the kids' stuffed animals under their bed. That's what he does. Very interesting dog. He looks like a stuffed animal when you pull the wicker basket out from underneath the bed.
his nose is like really pointy. It really sticks out of his face. Can't really tell from the front view, but it's it's kind of cute. And when he when he gets his I don't know if I mentioned this, but when he gets his haircut, Jennifer gives his haircut. He looks like a uh, looks like a, a miniature cow. He has little black spots all over him, and with with like pink skin. He even has like a black spot on his nose right here. It's pretty funny. One time there was a dog that came into our backyard. His name was Spike. We didn't like Spike. We met him one time. He wasn't invited to the party. And then a boy came chasing Spike and said Spike bit him. So then we really had our red alerts on because the kids are in the backyard and here's this 40, 50 pound dog running around, mini Doberman Pinscher style. And he isn't doing anything he's told. And just at that second, the Samson happened to be off of his leash or being leashed. He took off after the dog, it was probably outweighed him by 25 pounds at least, and chased him through the yard as I was chasing him through the yard, telling him not to go after the dog, and chased him clear, quite, chased that dog clear across the street and finally into another neighbor's yard and finally he stopped running and kind of looked at me and he looked like he was just done. It was kind of interesting how he just felt so compelled to go after this dog and the thing was, was uh, that other dog was very scared of him. So I thought that was pretty uh, loyal and uh, very brave of our little 13 pound dog to go after the other one like that with no fear whatsoever. So he lived up to his name that day, Samson. So he, he earned his name. The 13 pound Samson. Remember that, huh? That's pretty interesting. It's a great dog. Hey, Aaron, welcome. We meet again. It is a small world, is it not? We're right here in Algoma, working out of our little home studio here, working on a picture of the family dog for my wife, whose birthday is this, this week already, huh? Thursday? I think she's turning 21. No. 21. More like 35. I didn't hear that. <laughs> I think I think she said 25. <laughs> You're never supposed to say your age, right? Is that it? I don't care. You don't care? All right. I married an older woman. <laughs> she's got me beat by about five months. I married a cougar. I think that's what they call them. <laughs> She's a cougar. Sometimes Jennifer goes to the store and she goes places and she tells me stories about guys who are very open about their attraction to my wife. Sometimes on Facebook too. Very strange people. And uh, then I go, why didn't you tell me about this earlier so I could hunt them down? It's too late though. I suppose I'd only take it seriously if Aaron Rodgers came knocking on my front door. First I'd ask him for his autograph and then I'd kick him out. Promptly. No, just kidding. I, we'd probably just have him over for dinner and Jennifer would just stare at him for three hours. What? You would stare at him for three. <laughs> yeah, sure. So I want to get his ears in here, floppy little ears. You can see he's kind of like, like a, like I said, he's sitting in a pail, like a white pail or something. We put him in there for the photo shoot years ago. 
He would never go in there by himself. He's not that curious. He's a cute little dog, though. Somebody wished you a happy birthday. Kel wishes you a happy oh, birthday. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Sarah. I got to help out with my daughter's softball team this year. It was a blast. They took third place. Everybody did a great job. Coach was great. The kids were great. I had myself a blast. After four balls in the junior league, the coach gets to come out and pitch to the kids, and and the uh, kids always enjoyed that because after a while you get to knowing where their favorite pitches go, and you can throw them just the right pitch, so they hit it way out into the green. So you got to have a really good time. I got this from one of the girls. This is backwards, obviously. Walk by faith, not by sight. That's that's my. Uh, one of my favorite things right now. So that was from Sarah, so thank you. That was really cool. And uh, another girl named Lydia, I think she gave me like a Subway card or something. How did she know? That's like my favorite place to eat. So that was pretty cool. They had their little party last night and everybody got to hang out and, and uh, eat some hot dogs together. Played marshmallow baseball. I never heard of such a thing in my life. You replace the softball with a marshmallow and nobody wears gloves or pads or anything. It was great. I think I laughed hysterically for 45 minutes. I felt like I was back at the sand lot when I was a kid or something. So we had a great time this year. Great times in a small town. You can't get that in a bigger town. You can in the in the country areas and we're right on the lake area I think it's Wisconsin's best kept secret so Algoma is a great place round of applause there we go for Algoma there we go so I just want to make sure I get these eyes real good here Because that's, that's what you look for. And you know, he hasn't had his hair cut yet. His hair kind of gets in the way of his, of his eyes. And it's kind of funny. Because you wonder, like, doesn't he get tired of looking at his own hair all the time? And uh, right now he's got a little bit shorter hair. But It's funny, you'll see like a dog on a TV show or on the TV set. And then you just have got to automatically go find your animal and give it a big hug. And that's what we do anyways. And I get to use the mirror of this actual camera here. And uh, yeah, we'll try to keep it quiet. best kept secret. I use this uh, Facebook viewfinder here as uh, it helps me as an artist when I look in the mirror I can see the piece of art. It's kind of like looking at yourself in the mirror you can see what you need to improve or you know if you got something in your teeth or whatever. It's the same way with art. I can see what I need to improve on or what I need to touch up. It's kind of like that. Uh, every portrait artist is different though. But I think everybody's got their own techniques, what works for them. Sometimes if you're really, you know, you're really having to work hard to get a portrait just right, take a photo of it and compare the photo to the original photograph. This is what I do sometimes, it works for me. You can steal the idea if you want. Hey, there we go. Homer pigeons, that'd be cool. I like pigeons. I like those morning doves, too. When I was a kid, I always thought 
they called them morning doves because I saw them in the morning. Well, later on when I grew up, they call them morning doves because they, they, supposedly the person that named them thinks they sound like they're in mourning or sad or something. I always thought they sounded kind of happy. Very soothing kind of a uh, sound to me anyways. That's just my opinion. That would be fun to race pigeons though. Hope I could beat him. Kind of just finish up this little sketch here. Not going to get too wild with it. Because it's a sketch. So when you're doing a sketch, you would have to know when to say when. And when to say, okay, I have reached the, uh, the end of this little study. And many times it's 30 to 45 minutes. I don't know why, but it just is. It's 30 minutes when you're just spot on. It's 45 minutes to an hour when, when maybe you're still warming up. But I have noticed, it's like anything else, like a picture warming up. You know, the more art you've done that day, the uh, quicker you can get to the likeness. It's pretty cool. It's like anything else. You get warmed up, and you tend to pull out your best lines and your your best moments toward the end of the day. And this little guy is wrapping up pretty quick here. I'm debating on one more thing to finish him up today. Feel free to share this with any friends, anybody that wants to learn how to do art. What I've learned is that the more you watch art being made, the easier it can be to actually make it yourself. That's what I've noticed. Now it doesn't come easy, it's it took me years to, uh, you know, I, I would never say I've perfected the art of portraiture, that just sounds ridiculous, but I can say to get to the place where you're happy with that and it, and it looks like the individual or the pet or the whatever, it took me years to get there, and a lot of wrinkled up pieces of paper, a few frustrated moments, but it's been a fun ride, and uh, it, ta it does take a while to get the portraits down. Some people, though, are very, very naturally gifted, naturally talented, and it just comes really, really easy for them. I spent a lot of time as a, as a youngster, like my kid's age now, just working on art. Sacrificed a lot of time, you know, hanging out with other kids sometimes and other friends because I was indoors working on art. You too, Aaron. I can add a little bit of brown to this picture and call her a night. Call it a sketch, if you will. I just got to find just the right color to make this guy really pop. As we used to say in the jewelry studio, when I worked in a jewelry studio. Always wanted that uh, that gem or that diamond to really pop. Here we go. Let's see if this is the right color for it. He's got a little bit of brown underneath, kind of some of the white hair. Obviously, he's got he's white and black and brown. I'm going to add just a little tinge of 
like a yellow ochre, or I should say, with this one, Prismacolor, you can see it backwards. This is the good stuff. Bella says, hey dad, how's it going? Little kiddo. Dad's making Crayola drawings in the studio. He's got his little brown eyes. We don't want to color in the reflective white in his eyes. We want to leave that. Because then he's looking at you. That's a little technique that comes with a little bit of practice. He's got a little tinge of uh, yellow in his hair. Makes him special. Because he's a special little guy. Our little Samson. Add a little yellow up here. A little yellow on the edge. Just enough to make it look a little more lively. I think the goldenrod color is really helping. Because he has that color around his eyes. And the fringes of his hair and stuff. And we have a little bit of pink that's showing through. This is called Deco Pink. Let's do Deco Pink. What do you say? Thanks, Kel. Appreciate it. Just a little. I don't want to get crazy with it. You can ruin a picture sometimes by just going overboard. So, I've been there, done that. I bought the t-shirt, cried a few tears as a little kid, not as a grown up, I wouldn't do that. My first in plein air painting I ever did outdoors, I felt just turned out terrible and I was really upset by it. Um, I almost felt like giving up and then I went out and did the same scene again and I finally pulled it off and I was, was really happy. I was really happy I was able to make it work. And I still have that picture today. It always reminds me that, you know, even though maybe you got up there, you struck out, well, next time you get up to the plate, maybe you hit a big old line drive or maybe even a home run. Just don't give up. Giving up is not worth it. It costs too much to do that. Okay. Reach that point where I want to I look at the picture and I say, "Well, what else did I want to say with this?" And maybe I want to Maybe I want to put a little bit of color here. Do a little, just a little fun little sketch of this guy tonight. Because he's so special to his family. Yeah, I made it pop out, huh? That's cool. It really doesn't take much to do it either. Just a little bit of time, you know. I mean, obviously a lot of practice, but you'd be surprised what you can pull off if you just give yourself a chance and cheer yourself on. You know, it may not always turn out the way you wanted it to, but maybe you'll stumble on something else that you didn't know you could do. I think everybody's an artist in their own way. My wife's an artist with her food. She's also a writer, working on a little book about her life, which I'm really excited for. She kind of works at it here or there. And it's just, it's like the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. He worked on it here and there. He carried it under his arm, just kept working on it, kept working on it. Now it's the most famous painting in the world. 
even if some people think it's a self-portrait of Leonardo da Vinci as a woman, I kind of disagree. I think it's, I hope it's just a picture of Mona Lisa. But anyways, that's another story for another time. Regardless of all that, his paintings were masterpieces. The Last Supper, which unfortunately is falling to pieces as we speak, because he was experimenting with certain, you know, egg temperers or whatever it was that he was using. But we still have the Mona Lisa, and that's a very mysterious smile indeed. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed the uh, program tonight. I know I enjoyed it. Kind of sharing some funny stories and wishing my wife a very happy 21st birthday. 21st? Wow. That's something special. Well, anyways, um, I'm going to finish up some little details here. And then you can do with, with it what you like. Hope you enjoy the family picture for your birthday this year. And um, hope I bragged you up a little bit with all the people here on Facebook. And uh, thanks everyone for watching. And everyone have a wonderful evening. And again, if you want to see more art, check out oilpastelart.com. And you can see more pieces of art by this guy. With these and other things, brushes and things like this. So anyways, thank you for watching, and everyone have a wonderful evening. And in two days, happy birthday to my wonderful wife of 12 years. You're going to have some fun, and enjoy yourself, and have some good dinner this time. None of that dinner you got to send back because it's cold or it tastes funny. Good dinner. How's that sound? All right, everyone have a good night, and we'll see you later. Bye now.